you have a psychology and environmental science degree. How does this tie into your work today? Yeah, I'm so impressed you guys like really researched me. <laughs> um, so psychology, yeah, psychology is the study of how people think about things. How, why do we interact in the way we do? Um, how do our brains work? And um, so that's been really helpful in thinking through a lot of the environmental issues. Like, why don't more people care about climate change? Yeah. Why don't people more, like more people think about it, do something about it, talk about it? Um, and I don't have all the answers, but my background in psychology has helped me a little bit understand you know, why people might be afraid to do something about it or why it might be too overwhelming to think about um, or like the bystander effect where nobody else seems to be doing anything, so why should I? Um, and so there are a lot of things in psychology that kind of help us think through climate change and the climate change problem and what's going on um, on a more social science level, which has been really interesting and um, really helpful for organizing and for the background in film. Um, and then all of my studies have been really helpful to just, you know, know a lot about climate change, be kind of an expert and be able to like quickly distinguish between what a good argument and a bad argument is <laughs> and, you know, distill the information in a way that would be digestible for the broader audience. Um, the Age of Consequences is an amazing film, deeply researched and with a compelling and very different point of view. How did you find and engage um, your mostly military interview subjects? Yeah, so when we came up with the, the um, topic for the film, we just started to do a lot of research. And that's called pre-production, which is before the film starts, before you start shooting. You do a lot of research. <laughs> so we did that. We did our homework. And um, the same names kept popping up again and again within the military climate angle. And so then we just you know, started reaching out to people, those folks, and would you know, say what we're doing, who we are. Um, and the hardest, we're getting our first few interviews. But then after that, we could name drop because they all know each yeah. other. So it'd be like, oh yeah, we just interviewed Sherry Goodman. And they'd be like, oh cool, I know Sherry, I trust her. Mm -hmm. And so then, sure, you can interview me as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how it went. And then once we got a bunch of them, it was like a lot yeah. easier. Um, but there were some key names that we also didn't get because they were too busy or too important or <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um. What is the biggest thing you hope people our age take away from your film, and what is a piece of advice you have for aspiring filmmakers? Hmm. I guess the biggest piece of advice, or the most, th the thing I would like you to take away is that um, the future is scary, and <laughs> I know that's kind of bleak, and it and it is, and yeah. and you know we're already seeing the consequences of climate change. I think the title of the film, The Age of Consequences, is perfect for what it is because we are in the age of consequences and your generation is going to see this for your entire lives um, and it's not going to get better you know even if we stop emissions it's still going to be really bad yeah. um, and so I think that goes back to what I was saying earlier about like for your generation do you follow your passions but how can you follow your passions in a way that will make an impact in climate change or social justice issues in a way that will leave your kids in a better place than you guys are now because mm -hmm. um, you're going to have to deal with a lot of stuff in the next you know 70 years that you're <laughs> alive hopefully yeah. more um, and what was the second piece um, and aspiring so, filmmakers yeah. Yeah. Um, go for it <laughs> just like grab a camera you know, everyone, you know, almost everyone has a smartphone these days. You can get great footage on that. Just start, you know, like, I don't know, following your dreams, finding what's important, um, finding stories that are compelling mm -hmm. and capturing them and, and creating stories because ultimately stories are what are going to, that's going to change, you know, that's, stories are what change people's minds. Facts don't change people's minds, but yeah. stories do. Right. Um, so if you can be a compelling storyteller, you're going to be pretty successful. And that's definitely um, a really great quality in any, any career that you choose. If you can tell a good story, you'll be, you'll be pretty well off. So just go for it. Okay. <laughs> um, I actually wanted to ask you what you personally thought was the best alternative energy. The best alternative energy. Um, well, so damaging. yeah, um, I guess solar, I mean, solar and wind, um, are my favorite renewables. Um, there's enough solar energy from the sun that hits the globe every two minutes to power the entire globe's energy needs for a year. Whoa. 
So if you think about that, that's pretty insane. Yeah. But then how do we capture that? Mm -hmm. um, especially in cities, like how do you power New York City on, on yeah. solar? Like that would probably be impossible. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a big challenge and I don't, I'm hopeful that we can get to a, a place where we'll just be 100% renewables, um, but we also have to be realistic about that and um, be realistic that there's no golden energy. Like we can't just count on solar and wind to power our world's needs because that's not realistic. Um, so, you know, we need to do more. We need to do more research. We need to do more um, development of new clean tech uh, technologies. And uh, solar and wind are my favorites, but we're going to need a lot of brilliant young thinkers to, to grow up and be engineers and come up with those solutions. Uh, what do you think of nuclear energy? Nuclear energy. The be a lot of thoughts. <laughs> um, nuclear is bad. Fossil fuels are worse. Yeah. That's how I feel about it. Um, so I think we may have to use it, unfortunately. I'm not thrilled about that. Yeah. But... Um, as of right now, we may need that stable baseline of energy. To at least sustain us until we can find a better option. That's, that's the hope. Um, yeah. But I mean, I think, you know, we need to get off fossil fuels as soon as possible. And if that means temporarily going with nuclear, then so be it. Um, I'm not thrilled about it, but I'm definitely not thrilled about climate change and, <laughs> and fossil fuels. So, well, you know, it's the least bad option.